Okay, so here's a video I'm going to make about why I believe that Lake Choga is the ultimate uh, storehouse and sustainable source of lake weeds in the country, particularly Salvinia molesta, which has a very high nutrient profile, lending, of course, to the higher value that it, it gives uh, in terms of when we talk about turning it into fertilizer. So here's Priceless Farms, which I've been developing over the last six years. This is an older image. We're just using Google Maps here, nothing too fancy. And you can see that we're situated directly on one of the arms of the Nile River as it flows into Lake Choga here. So I'll give you a bigger picture. You can just see how massive Lake Choga is. Lake Choga is 664 square miles of open water. That's around uh, close to a thousand square kilometers, I guess. I'm not gonna do the calculation too perfectly. But what I wanna show you here is our bay area. So. I'm gonna go and justify this north. Uh, let me get this correct. So there's north facing. And so the flow of the river is coming from the bottom and going to the top of the screen here. And you've got all these beautiful land features here, little islands and so on. And then we've got our bay area here where we did our fish system. So this is my huge mega fish system and our little area where we park our boat. And then I would take my speedboat out through this uh, man-made trench and then out into the lake proper. And in the lake here is where you get all of these lake weeds, okay? So this line here is all papyrus swamp, okay? Um, very thick papyrus swamp and we dug a channel and we get out and we originally had some fish cages here where I first started experiencing Salvinia molesta in its full force. This thing is a force of nature, unlike anything I've ever seen before uh, it started coming in. So just to give you an example, this bay area here is maybe hmm, three, four square kilometers, maybe even bigger, maybe like six square kilometers. And basically, I've seen the lake weed come down the river in such mass, and then the prevailing winds blow it back up because this water is uh, edding. It's not really flowing too, too much. And the whole bay area has been completely clogged with this lake weed before. And I've seen that happen many times. It's almost seasonal. And now I'm going to zoom in real close and I'm going to show you what these lake weeds look like. So my vision is setting this channel here with a, a bigger channel so the barge can come in and out and the support vehicles can come in and out. They're protected from storms by docking them in this main area and then using this bay to collect the lake weeds. Now in this particular image, we're seeing a very clear day. This is all open water. It looks like the satellite took the image around noon, so you're seeing a lot of re reflectivity from the sun. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on the shoreline here and show you where all the lake weeds are. So if we zoom over here, come along the lake lakeside, there's not too many in this image right now. But when we come over here to the Nile River and we open up, we come up river, this is about a 20 minute, 20 minute journey, maybe a 30 minute journey. And then you find these mats. And here, right here, this is all lake weeds, all of this stuff. This is massive. This is like a city block right here of lake weeds, okay? Then you look at this lighter green stuff here. All of this is lake weeds. This mat right here would be easily like 100 to 200 trips with a barge carrying anywhere between, you know, 10 to... 40 tons depending on how well we pack it down or if we put the squeezer on the barge itself I think we could we could collect a lot more and so we're, we would be filling up the IBC containers with 1,000 liters each of the pressed juice so I don't know how that would look like but even just this one mat right here would probably take like a month to clear okay and you can see what's happening when the wind is blowing this way the lake weeds are traveling down the river and then they're getting blown into this bay and they're collecting, okay? And when you look at the lake properly, if you look over here, let's go, let's go to another area, okay? Here, here's some that are actually moving. So here's mats that are growing. So again, like your vessel, the, which can hold a 40 foot container on it, is like this big. So that just gives you a scale. Like these are just free floating islands, okay? There's, they're absolutely everywhere. And remember, this is just one picture on one day. And you can see how they're blowing in the wind, just like how sand forms on the beaches. And they're getting caught up 
and you can see the prevailing wind because you can see how it's getting caught here. So clearly the wind is blowing this way in this image. And it's that prevailing wind which very often causes this bay here right off of the foot of our farm to also fill up. So I'll take a look in this area here, for example. Most of this lighter green stuff like this here, most of this is also free flowing lake weeds. Okay, and even that, that's like 30, 40 trips right there. And so from a business perspective, having direct immediate access to a continual flow of lake weeds here is the most cost effective way of getting these things. And because it's pre prevailing, um, it's predominantly Salvinia molesta lake weeds, you're getting that much more nutrients. I think it's got at least like two to three times the amount of nutritional content than um, the water hyacinth, which is more prevalent on Lake Victoria. So now, if we go into the lake proper, you can see, let me zoom out a bit, let's go. You can see that the whole lake has these mats everywhere. This is a mat. These are mats floating around. Here's another cluster. These are all just forming. So these ones look like, if you look at the shape and how it looks like, these are like little one meter sized uh, islands. And in two weeks, that volume of Salvinia molesta will double. Okay, so these mats double every two weeks and they they go in seasons. So they will die off and float down to the bottom, but it produces seeds which float to the bottom of the lake. So this is why here, look at that, look at this many, many, many thousands of islands. I mean, this is literally easily a million tons just right here, like all of this, because I can tell these, these ones that have formed really thick mats, these ones are almost like little islands. So the amount of nutrients in each of these is insane because you're almost getting like pure soils there. And this is throughout the entire lake. Everywhere you go, there's another huge mat. Um, and basically... That's why I believe Lake Choga is so good, not only because we own this property which goes directly into the lake, we're very close with the government, I'm very close with the UPDF that control the lake. It'll be very easy for us to get permissions to do this because these lake weeds choke out fishing communities. Now let's go down to Jinja. Now we're on Lake, 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 lake uh, Victoria and we're gonna come over to uh, the site which uh, the Van P family owns, which is right here this incredible peninsula. This is one of the most beautiful, beautiful properties that they have. And um, they're doing wonderful things here. So this is their their farm here. And uh, this is their forest right here. And what you find in Lake Choga, if you look at these green plumes, is you're seeing algae plumes. Okay, so this is all plumes of algae because there's a lot of um, affluent, uh, sorry, effluent um, flowing into the the lake in this area because of these flower farms and also because of the society around it okay but you have a lot of flower farms here which you can directly see you can even see exactly where their runoff is okay because the nutrients which are flowing out of that system daily are causing algae blooms in the lake so possibly we would look at maybe some algae collection system with filters on the barge however how much is it going to cost to do that? And also look at the scale of how big the lake is with respect to the lake weed mats. So like finding lake weeds here, very difficult. I'm zooming right in on the water. There's very, very few locations on Lake Choga, uh, sorry, Lake Victoria, where you're going to find large scale mats. Okay. And that's, that's a really big problem. So that's my justification for why um, we should seriously consider this because actually the Nile River here, it acts like a giant conveyor belt bringing the lake weeds down. And anytime the wind blows this way, which is very often, we get the lake weeds delivered right to our door. Okay? And that right there is our cheapest, cost-effective way to get the raw materials. And we're talking tens of millions of tons of this stuff is available at any given time just within this area here and I could see you using going there and back within this radius you would use no more than 10 10 liters of diesel if you're just trucking along on a low pace 
So that's my justification. Hope that video uh, helps you understand what we're dealing with here in terms of the resource. Just out of just out of uh, curiosity for your information, we're squished between the Sazibwa River system, which is a swamp river completely full of lake weeds, and the Nile River here. Okay, with Lake Choga at the top. Transport from here down to Garuga is uh, yeah about two hundred dollars a trip. Two hundred dollars in fuel. If we own our own trucks, it, it's even cheaper. Um, so my suggestion is we press the lake weeds from here, we transport them down to the Garuga site and uh, process everything from there. Um, yeah, so that's my suggestion and it's food for thought. Hope that was helpful. And um, yeah, there you go. That's the beautiful country we're working in. Peter, we're really looking forward to hosting you when you're able to make it down. Come on over.